Looking for something? Um, uh, I was just looking for, uh, <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> you were looking for car and driver? Hmm? Uh, yeah, because as you know, I'll be driving in a few short years, and it's never too soon to start studying all the important things there are to know about cars, like how fast they go and the available colors. Your parents called. They'll be here any minute. Okay, good. Well, I'll be upstairs in my room. Good night, George. Good night, Amelia. Mom, is George okay? He seems a little sad. Well, his wife passed away this time of year, a few years back. I think he's just really missing her. I've been wanting to invite him to come with us to church. I keep chickening out. Oh, honey, that's so sweet. You know, your father and I have invited him to come to church with us several times. I still want to try, though. I don't think he'd mind if you did. I know, but it still scares me. I've even been praying about it. I'm so glad you've been praying about it. You know, praying is one of the most important things we can do. There's something else that can help, too. Can I tell you about it? Sometimes, when there's something that I really need the Lord's help with, something that needs a ton of faith, I fast. Fasting? But that's so hard for me. I know. It's not easy for me either. But there's something about going without food and drink in the spirit of fasting that can really bring forth blessings from heaven. Maybe if I told you a story, it would help explain it. I was hoping you'd say that. Once there was a beautiful young woman named Esther who lived a long time ago in a village called Shushan. Now Esther's parents died when she was young, so she'd been raised by a relative named Mordecai. Look, something's happening. <laughs> e Esther? Did you do that? Sorry, Uncle. Sometimes I wonder if your parents could see you now. Do they think I was raising a young woman or a central midfielder? Perhaps they would think you had raised Esther. Uh, <laughs> only Shushan United had an opening for a girl. Esther? Look, there's news. Come to the palace, the bells are ringing. Someone from home that has joined the grave. Trumpets are blaring, the gates are speeding, there is news today. I can see somebody who looks eminent. Surely there's something profound he'll say. What could it be? Who knows, but it's evident. There is news today. There is news, I'm gonna hear it. There is news, so lift your spirits. There is news. Come on this way, there is news today. 
In all my years living here in Shushan, I've never seen such a big soiree. I'm sure it'll just be an execution. There is news today. There is news. I've got it here with me. Ladies and gentlemen, the king has confided that all fair young maidens must report to me. By the end of the year, he will have decided who will be the next queen. That's right. One of you lucky fair young maidens will get chosen by the king to marry him. Once married, you will have servants, gold, freedom to do pretty much whatever you want. And of course, if the king dies, you'll rule the kingdom of Shushan! Now wait a minute, madam. I said, fair young maidens, you need to brush your teeth. There is us, one lovely girl the king will choose, and change the world. There is us, it's all his glory and all day. Go. But Uncle King Asworth would never choose me. Why not? You're fair, you're young, and you got a great leg on you. No, I mean the king would never choose a Jew. Who has to know you're a Jew? <laughs> Just don't tell him. Until the time comes. Promise me. Now go. Okay. Bye, Uncle. <laughs> Esther pledges to honor Mordecai's wishes about keeping the secret of her heritage, and Mordecai knows that she will, as she always has. So Esther and many other fair young maidens are brought into the king's palace, where they are prepared for their turn to meet the king over the space of a year. Now just before each woman was to go before the king, she was allowed to have whatever she wanted to take with her. It's your turn, Maiden Harriet. Ready? Are you trying to rush me? Why no? Need I remind you, Haggai, that this very day I could be your queen? No, Maiden Harriet. I just thought you looked beautiful, and perhaps you were ready to go in and see the king. I am ravishing, aren't I? <laughs> but it's not enough. What do you mean? Is it true, Haggai? I can have anything I desire before I go to the king? Yes, that's true, but what more could you want? Well, let me tell you. If you want to get the king's affection, you have got to make a big impression. And the only way to get a guy To see you as you pass him by Is to multiply the volume of your hair And your makeup What's the biggest difference between the genders? The only thing he's likely to remember So if I've only got one chance To get him to take me to the dance I'm betting on cosmetology. What more could a king want? She's right. What more could a king want? He's gonna look at her and and his hat. For a bull and to adore his arm, he'll be smitten by the charm. What more could a king want? If you really want 
want to catch the king's eyes. You have really got to learn to accessorize. Nothing spruces up a girl like diamonds and strings of pearls. With one big rock, I'm bound to rock his world. What more could a king want? She's right. What more could a king want? Well, actually, I have an idea. He's gonna look at her and end his heart. For a woman to adorn his arm, he'll be smitten by her charm. What more could a king want? <laughs> if you want to take out his defense. You've got to take advantage of his same sense. And the sense of smell is the very best to make a man ignore the rest. Yes, the secret is the power of perfume. What more could a king want? She's right. What more could a king want? He's gonna look at her and end his heart. Respect what you're all trying to do, but let's be honest: are all those things really you? Whether it's the king or not, if you're gonna tie the knot, I think the thing is just being yourself. So when it's Esther's turn to go before the king, she doesn't put on a bunch of fancy things. She just goes as herself. I bet that works. It works, right? Let's see what happens. And you are? I am Esther. You certainly are. <laughs> Uh, Your Highness, King Ahasuerus. May I present the maiden, Esther? You have but one chance to impress the king, and you come like this. <laughs> I could never be too happy being someone that I'm not. Take a good look deep inside me. 
because we've only got one chance to find the kind of love that will last throughout a lifetime. So tell me, can you love who I am inside? Cause if I have to try to be someone who will never be your love, only till the day that we can't go on pretending Tell me, can you love me? So... So... what? So, does the king pick Esther to be the queen? I bet that's something that Mordecai and the other maidens really wanted to know, too. Let's find out. King Ahasuerus has chosen for his queen, Esther! I'm sorry, Queen Esther has no comment at this time. The palace will give a full statement tomorrow morning's briefing. Thank you. That king is a lucky man. And that's all it is. Luck. I mean, how can Ahasuerus get a girl like Esther? Simply because he was born at the right place at the right time? Oh, you mean to a king and a queen in the palace instead of to closely related peasants in the forest? Precisely. Tell me, Big Dan. How long you been working in the palace? Uh, twelve years. Six for me. Twelve and six, uh, that's, uh... Nineteen years of hard labor. He's been here less than half that. But we're stuck as keepers of the door. He gets the cushy job. Plus, Esther. It's not right, I tell you. Hmm? It's time we take matters into our own hands. What are you saying, Teresh? I'll tell you what I'm saying. Sometimes it takes a sacrifice To make the world a little nicer And that sacrifice is gonna be the king Cause if he's gone, our lovely queen Will be back in the single scene Then I could win her heart And we'd have love to sing But all of this could only be if you and I become a team and together we could rule the kingdom you and me me and you there's nothing that we cannot do no peril we can't make it through together together I got brains, you got brawn, I'm telling you it won't be long Till we rule all of Shushan together Together But how can we be sure that she will marry you? If I'm the only choice, then I guess I'll have to do Huh? If you take care of all the rest And I dress up and look my best Then you and I will gain our quest Together Together You and me Me and you There's nothing that we cannot do No peril We can't make it through Together Together I got brains And I got brawn Yes, I'm sure, sure it won't be long Till we rule all of Shushan Together Together 
together. I hope nobody heard us. Of course not. I was being discreet. Huh? We act at midnight. <clears throat> My large yet nimble-footed friend. Huh? Huh? When the big shadow and the little shadow both point up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when Mordecai overheard what Big Than and Teresh were planning to do. He knew he had to do something. Oh, wait! Wait for me! Oh, give me one more chance! Oh no! Don't take me away! Oh, no. I was surprised. I imagine that Mordecai was worried, not just for the safety of the king, but for Esther as well. Mordecai tells her all about Big Then and Teresha's plot to kill the king. Esther knows what she must do. Warn the king as soon as she possibly can. So Esther lets the king know what Mordecai found out, and King Ahasuerus orders his guards to arrest Big Than and Teresh and his men to conduct a full investigation. I suppose it's quite possible that Haman might have used his position to claim at least a little credit for saving the king's life. Your Highness, these two men have been plotting against you. I thought you might like to know. Away with those men. There shall be a full inquisition. And when the investigation is complete... Haman? The king makes Haman, who was just one prince among many in his kingdom, the top prince in all the land. He makes an order that all men must bow before him. Henceforth, all men shall bow before Haman's presence. By order of King Ahasuerus, all men must bow before the presence of Haman. I can only imagine how much Haman must have enjoyed his new position in the king's court, especially all the bowing. Prince. Ooh, I do like the sound of that. You say it. Top Prince. Oh, oh, I've arrived. I've truly arrived. I've gone as high as I can possibly go. But well, that's not technically correct. Hmm? Well, in the unlikely event that both the king and queen were to die before having a child, well, then you would be the rightful heir to the throne. Oh, it... So if I understand you correctly... Wait, what is your name? Oh, they call me Chamberlain, sir. Well, surely you have a name. Chamberlain will be fine. Don't be ridiculous. Just tell me your name. It's not it's difficult. Carcass, sir. I shall call you Chamberlain. Oh. So if I understand you correctly, Chamberlain, should the king and queen both tragically die before they have offspring, 
Then I would be the king? That is my understanding, sir. <laughs> To be the king to be, 'cause everyone bows down to me, and everywhere I look, I see things that will belong to me. Yes, it's great to be the king to be, 'cause everybody wants to be as powerful and rich as me. The icon of reality, and if I were a common man, and I'm not saying that I am, I'd stand in line to see the grand summoning of the man I am. Yes, it's great to be the king to be for commoners and bourgeoisie. And even the aristocracy loves me. If I were a common man, and I'm not saying that I am, I'd stand in line to see the man I am. I see not that. It's great to be the king to be for commoners and bourgeoisie, and even the aristocracy love me. Yeah, everything will belong to me, and everybody envies me. It's great to be the king to be. Chamberlain, come with me. <laughs> Chamberlain. Yes, Prince. Chamberlain. Yes, Prince. Stop. Move once more, and I shall have you hung from the tallest gallows in the kingdom. You see that man down there? Yes, the one who didn't bow. Yes, him. Go back down there and find out why he didn't bow. Certainly, Prince Haman. You there? Why did you not give reverence to Haman? Did you not know that it was decreed that all the king's people must bow before Haman? But I am not. The king's people. Excuse me. We are Jews. We are not the king's people. We are God's chosen people. Ah. Well, this ought to be interesting. He said what? I suppose you'll want him killed. <laughs> Won't solve the problem, as he said himself. It's not just him; it's all those Jewish people. I'll show them. Haman tells the king that there is a certain people scattered among the king's people that say they have their own laws and don't have to obey the king's laws. He persuades the king to pass a law 
ordering that on a certain date that was coming up, all the Jewish people in the kingdom were to be destroyed. The king approves of the plan and orders the decree to be sealed with the king's ring and sent to every province in the kingdom. But wait a minute. Esther is a Jew. Does this mean she's going to be killed too? The decree said all the Jewish people were to be destroyed. But she's his queen! Yes, but remember, Esther is keeping the promise she made to Mordecai to not tell anyone of her heritage. <laughs> when Mordecai hears about this new law, he is very sad. To show how sad he is, he puts on sackcloth and ashes and tries to go talk to Stop Esther. Stop right there. But I, I must speak with the queen. It, it's urgent. No one wearing sackcloth may enter the king's gate. Will you at least give a message to her? Why would the queen want to hear from you, a Jew? Be on your way, old man. <laughs> Finally, he bows. <laughs> Esther's servants hurry to tell her what happened. She calls for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, and sends him to ask Mordecai what has troubled him so. Yes, your highness. So Hatak went to the street near the king's gate to find Mordecai. The queen has asked me to come to you to find out what is troubling you. Mordecai tells him how Haman had convinced the king to send out a decree throughout the land to have all the Jews destroyed. He asked Hatak to show the decree to Esther and to ask her to go before the king to plead for the lives of the Jewish people. Please, tell Esther the time has come. Perhaps the Lord has placed her where she is for such a time as this. And when Atak returns to Esther, he tells her all that Mordecai said to him. He gives her the decree, and then tells her of Mordecai's request that she go before the king. Please tell me, Your Highness, you are not considering this. Surely you know that those who go before the king, who have not been summoned by him, the same shall be put to death. Except the king shall hold out the golden scepter. You would put your life at risk for these people? For my people. Oh, forgive me, Your Highness. I would walk across the desert I would swim across the sea I would fight a thousand armies If that's what God asked of me I would climb the highest mountain With my life I'd gladly pay But am I willing just to live from day to day? What would I give to live? What would I say to save my people? What would I lose to choose? Cut over the evil. What would I do to prove? That with God I am not afraid. Am I willing to simply fast and pray? What would I Bro! <laughs> 
Esther tells her servants that she will fast for three days. Three days? Mm -hmm. And when her servants hear of this, they pledge to fast with her. No. Our Lady fasts. We will fast. Hatak, please tell Mordecai to go among all the Jews and ask them to fast for me, to neither eat nor drink for three days. I also, and my maidens, will fast likewise. And then I will go in unto the king. But your highness. And if I perish, I perish. Yes, your highness. So Esther and her people begin their fast. On the third day, she goes before the king. Do you think the king would really have her killed? In those days, to protect themselves from being attacked, kings were very careful about who could come to see them. Some didn't even trust their own queen. You, your Highness. Please tell the king I am here. But your majesty, he has not summoned you. Please. He will have you, Harpana. Tell the king I am here. Sire, someone is here to see you. The king summoned no one. Esther. It is I, sire. Seize her! Ho! What is it, Esther? Tell me. I will grant you anything you desire. Up to half of my kingdom. Anything. Please, sire. Favor me with your presence, and the presence of Haman, at a banquet tomorrow evening. It is then that I will tell you what I wish. It shall be done. Harbana? Yes, sire. Tomorrow I shall attend a banquet prepared by the Lord. I know my prayers are heard, for thou hast answered every word, and I rejoice now to know. Not forsake me, it's enough to make me grateful. I am so grateful now. Grateful, even though the darkest hour. In my power to brighten up my nights and make me grateful. It shall be done, sire. Excuse me, sire, but did. Queen Esther just say that I should join the both of you at a banquet tomorrow night? She did. Oh, of course. As you wish. Your Highness. Your Grace. Haman. Haman. Oh. Your Highness. Your Grace. Your Majesty. What 
in the world. Zeresh, my darling, my peach, my precious little strudel. What if somebody saw you doing that, that whatever you call a thing you were doing? Never mind that. Something wonderful has just happened. Really? Yes. I can't believe the streak of luck I'm having. First there's the promotion to top prince. Then this ring. And how everyone has to bow to me. I love that part. Now, I've been invited to a special feast put on by the Queen that includes a very exclusive guest list. With uh, just me and, uh, let's see, one other person. Yes, let's see, who was it? The King! Oh, oh. you lead a charmed life, Heyman. Oh, I do, don't uh, I? All except for one thing. And what's that, my little oh, chicken leg? Nothing, just that Mordecai fellow. Oh, him. There, there, darling. You have nothing to worry about. Tomorrow night at the banquet, when the king grants you anything you wish. Do you think he will? Uh, why else do you think you were invited to the banquet? Well, what shall I wish for? Now, what's the one thing that's been bothering you? Oh. Oh, him. <laughs> exactly. Simply ask the king to have Mordecai. Hmm. That's a brilliant idea. Guards, instruct the royal builders to build a gallows immediately. And tell them to make it... Ten cubits high. Ten? Twenty cubits high. Um. Thirty. Mm. Forty. Fifty? Mm. Fifty cubits high. Ooh, my little poison dapple. But <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? That night, the king can't sleep. Instead of counting sheep, he's found something far better. He has a servant read to him from the royal records. But before the king gets too sleepy, the servant gets to the royal records that talks about how Mordecai had saved the king's life by telling Esther about the two men who were plotting to kill him. I'd nearly forgotten about that. <gasps> Tell me, what did we do to reward this Mordecai? Hmm. I'm sorry, sire. It appears we didn't. Uh, but we rewarded Haman quite generously, though. But nothing about Mordecai? Nothing, sire. I am so bad about remembering things like anniversaries or birthdays or when people uncover conspiracies to assassinate me. This must be remedied. You could send some flowers. This is beyond flowers. Hmm. Chocolates. No, this is beyond chocolates. When someone honors me in such a way, he deserves more. Much more. Pardon me, sire. I'm sure I don't know who you could possibly be talking about. But perhaps I could be of some assistance. Very well. How would you honor someone who delights the king? How about a bouquet of balloons? Oh, that is not an honor worthy of a person who delights a king. Oh, certainly not this king. Think bigger, my man. Much, much bigger. Like what? Oh, just off the top of my head. You only wear your clothing maybe once or twice. Oh, and remember that red and yellow striped number with the feathered collar and the green silk cape? Well, that was nice. Adorn this man with your hand me downs, and he'll be the best dressed man in town. Oh, that's perfect! But perhaps a little bit more. I'm loving this direction, but a little bit more. Will show the king's affection More than just the common man More just because you can Yes, give him all that And a little bit more mm. While this man is wearing your apparel well, He shouldn't be found riding In a barrel such a man deserves a horse to ride upon a brand new horse. Sounds wonderful. Yes, but a little bit more. 
I'm loving this direction, but a little bit more would show the king's affection. More than just a common man, more just because you can. Just give him all that and a little bit more. Now, if you're truly pleased with such a man as this, there's one more thing to give him that you wouldn't miss. To give him a royal crown and parade it all over town by a noble prince. That's it. Yes, it's perfect. <laughs> Raymond hit the nail right on the head. Take all these things yourself to Mordecai and see that they are done to him, as you have said. You mean, have Mordecai do these things to me? No. Oh. <laughs> now, stop your whining. You brought this on yourself. That was the worst experience of my life. Parading Mordecai all through town is like losing my ring and staying snap up on the- out of it. It's almost time for the banquet. But it hurts. Well, at least there's only one way the rest of this day can go, and that's up. Prince Haman, it is time for the royal banquet. See? It's beginning to look up already. Now you get in there and fix everything, all right? I... All right? Hmm? <laughs> that's better. Now, just remember you're still the top prince. Top prince. You got a 50 cubic gallows. Big gallows. Now, you get in there and flex some muscle. That was truly the most divine meal I've ever had. Mm, indeed. Thank you, Esther. Yes. Thank you, Esther. <clears throat> Queen Esther. You are both too kind. Oh, nonsense. Now, down to business. Yesterday, I promised you anything you desire. Up to half of my kingdom. What is it to be? <sighs> Esther. Please. If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it please the king, please spare the life of my people. Your people? For an order has been made that we are all to be killed. Who would dare make such an order? Yes, who would dare make such an order? It was Haman. I didn't know such thing. I only made an order to destroy the Jews, so unless you're a... Are you? I am. Uh oh. I'm sorry I didn't tell Your you highness? I wanted to. But... Your Highness, I had no idea. It was an honest mistake. Anybody could have made it. Get out of my way. Please leave me. All of you. I need you to talk to the king. Leave me. Oh, perhaps I'm not making myself clear. I need you to talk to the king. Let me go. You're, you're hurting me. Oh, and I'll hurt you a lot more if you don't talk to the king for me. Haman! Your Highness, I was just... pleading my cause before the queen. 
seize him. Huh? Oh! 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 Ow! What shall we do with him, sire? Suggestions, sire? Someone. Not sure who. Just built a gallows 50 cubits high. Never been used. Shame to see it go to waste. Wait! Oh! Oh, my king. My ring. Oh! 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 Oh, your highness! Oh! Watch it, I just got a manicure! Please leave us. I could never be too happy Living life behind the front To be true to what's inside me is the only thing I've wanted I would understand if you Are hurt to know the truth about me now But tell me, can you love me For who I am inside Cause if I have to try to be Someone who will never be your love Why until the day that we can't go on pretending Tell me, can you love me? was thinking, letting people push me around, but I would only be more foolish to lose what I have found in you. You have made my dreams of love come true, and every day I'm wanting to improve. Tell me, can you If you've had to try to be someone who you'll never be, I failed you. We've been waiting for the day that you can't go on pretending anymore. So tell me, can you? Ladies and gentlemen, King Ahasuerus and your Jewish queen, Esther. It's apologies. None of you will be executed. Thanks to your queen, you are all free. Yeah. Yeah. 
And though you may not be fasting to save a whole group of people, you never know what inviting George to church might do for him someday, and maybe for his children, and for their children's children, and then maybe their children's 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 children. children. (laughs) So you see where I'm going with this. (laughs) Morning, George. You're walking by Silver Dollar Pancakes? They're your favorite. They do smell good, but they'll have to be for Mom and Dad. You're not feeling well? Oh, no. I'm fine. I'm fasting. I'm trying to build up the courage to invite you to come to church with us today. I think you'd like it. Anyway, thanks for offering the pancakes. They do smell really yummy. Ready, sweetheart? Hold on. I, uh, I knew that going to church must be important if, uh, Millie is willing to pass up on my world famous silver dollar pancakes. Can we have them for dinner? Absolutely. To be, cause one bows me everywhere. I see things that belong to, yes, it's the key. The eye and for a man, I'm not that I, I just have to see and of the man. Pray to the king to pour, cut and food, and the air is sweet. Saying that I am, I sit in line to see the man I am. Hey, you be the air, and you be the air. 